natural formation. Hey everyone, it's Grant from Spectre Racing. All right, so if you're new to the channel here, we do a lot of grassroots racing. Uh, I do, I've been doing Time Attack lately, a lot of educational content. We started off doing a lot of autocross back in the day. Still do that a little bit. But before I get to the, the Warthog itself, um, just some background on me and the channel. I've always been a Halo fan. I remember in 1999 on dial crappy dial-up internet seeing it at uh, Macworld before Microsoft actually bought uh, the Halo license. Uh, fast forward a little bit of time and the, uh, the first video on this channel, it used to be my private channel, is the Homefront mod trailer. A mod that a few buddies and I, of which some came to my wedding and stuff, and then I'm bringing the Warthog 2 so their kids can drive it. Makes me feel old. Uh, but uh, the Homefront mod was a total conversion mod for Halo uh, on Battlefield 1942 and Battlefield Vietnam games back when they were really good. Um, so, you know, been a Halo fan my whole life, still play Halo Infinite and stuff. So the goals for the Warthog. So basically, uh, at a lot of the races I go to, the grid life uh, festivals and stuff, uh, there is an exorbitant amount of walking. Uh, so normally, you know, not a big deal, but you know, with having wearing a race suit, rushing around, sometimes at the festival, uh, the you get a 10 pound bag of ice or go get food. I'm in my race suit, race shoes. I don't feel like switching a uh, mile away to the bathroom or something. A lot of people use scooters. Uh, if you have a big golf cart and a lot of money, <laughs> they have golf carts and stuff. I didn't really want any of those. I wanted something kind of in between, and, and the wife didn't really want me getting a motor, a little motorcycle or whatever. Um, so I wanted to find something that was not too convenient, like a golf cart, because then I'd probably just get fat and use it all the time. Uh, and the other thing to take into consideration recently that I'm going to do a video on soon is that I got a Futura roll-on, roll-off trailer. So like, it's a, um, the trailer lowers down onto the ground. So I don't have to mess around with ramps, readjust the ramps for something like this, just, just uh, unstrap it, and it's ready to rock. Okay, so what is this made out of? Okay, so obviously uh, it's made out of the Power Wheels uh, uh, Warthog. It's not really Power Wheels, I think it's some other company uh, that Walmart sells. I saw this in January at Walmart and because I'm a, ch a child underneath, <laughs> I bought it having no plan whatsoever. Uh, I just had to have it, you know, Halo fan through and through. Um, so I bought the thing and slowly I came up with the ideas, I, I could use this as some kind of pit vehicle. So I'd done a lot of research to try and find the perfect donor vehicle. So I wanted the conversion to be as quickly as possible. I didn't have time to, to fabricate every little end in, you know, in and out. Uh, so I, I came across the Mototech Raider UTV and I noticed that it had a tub that was similar to the Warthog in that the, uh, I didn't have to cut out like on an ATV, kind of sit on top of the motor. It had kind of a, a, a standard car chassis tub. Uh, so it was electric. I didn't want to have to deal with uh, maintaining one more engine. I already got enough of that. Uh, I could just leave something charged. Uh, and lastly, the dimensions were very, very similar to the Power Wheels Warthog. It was a little bit longer, but it was the exact same width. So I kind of took a chance and I bought it. And the other thing with the Mototech, it was, you know, has all steel um, suspension and everything. I had a 165 pound weight limit, which every other one I could find had a much lower weight limit. Me being 175 pounds, that was close considering I had some plans on the lead acid batteries that came. Okay, so merging the two vehicles. So obviously, um, they both were gonna have to get kind of chopped up. I was a little nervous about essentially just ruining both of them and throwing money in the toilet. Um, but 
So the first thing I had to do, assemble the Mototech. Uh, I had to chop off the rear crossbar. If you notice on the Mototech, the rear crossbar uh, was higher than the front, whereas on the Warthog, uh, they're kind of, the front and back are equal. Uh, so I had to cut that off. I had to learn how to weld because I hadn't gone, uh, haven't done that yet. So I had to spend a lot of time learning how to weld. So I cut that off, re-welded uh, the crossbar at the same height and position as the kind of the, the, the gunner area on the Warthog. Although this is the M12B mini scout version, although there is a scout version. I just made up the mini. Um, so then once that was all done, you know, obviously I had to chop up a lot of the plastic on the UTV to kind of eyeball a lot of this. Uh, unfortunately, it took a lot. Most of the time doing this was just basically cutting a piece off, seeing it doesn't fit, cutting a little bit more until I got it right. Um, there's probably a more precision way to do it. Um, if I had a scanner or some 3D scanner or something, I probably could have modeled it in SolidWorks or something. Didn't really have the time for that. Uh, this is not going to be aerospace quality uh, uh, build here. <laughs> but, so I took the Warthog then. The Warthog basically had to cut out the entire inner tub of the Warthog. Uh, so that's why you see in the pictures, uh, it has kind of carpeting in the inside. Um, that's because there's just basically nothing left of the Warthog. So one of the other things that I did with the Warthog is, or with the UTV, it came with four 12 amp hour lead acid batteries. And they were extremely heavy. I don't remember the weight, but um, I just know that the, I bought an e-bike battery, a 20 amp hour e-bike battery. It's a 48 volt system. So it's a single battery as opposed to having to get a balancer or something and charge four different 12 volts. Uh, so have like almost double the runtime of the stock vehicle, which Mototech claimed like a few miles. I don't really know if that's true. The lead asses were pretty terrible. Um, so but then that it's 12 pounds lighter. Okay, so with the uh, everything cut out of the Warthog, I actually put the original dash from the Warthog and put all the buttons and stuff from the UTV in that. Uh, the, where the steering wheel is is actually the shifter. <laughs> For, for the old Warthog, because it was kind of offset, obviously, because it was a left-hand drive in the Warthog for a six-year-old. But, um, so I, yeah, there's some little more finishing touches I could probably do in the later revision to this when I don't have just one weekend to work on it. Um, but I think overall it came out pretty good. All right, so you can see here we got the, the fake winch and tusks. Maybe in the future I'll weld on some real tusks and a real winch, although the weight is kind of concerned. The independent suspension, uh, tires, it's two wheel drive. Um, so the seat is from the original UTV, you got space for pistols. Um, underneath here is the 20 amp hour lithium battery. A uh, little flap here you can see, this is like a non flammable, static free uh, uh, carpet you can buy. I use a lot of pro RV projects and stuff. Um, that's the charger. Um, yeah, like I said, the um, Carpeting in the side. Uh, so the dash here, this is the shifter, uh, ignition, the lights, which I don't have hooked up right now. I need to find some better lights. They're pretty pathetic. Um, you can see this is the original dash. Um, I need to figure out the audio pack that the original car came with. I do not have that hooked up. I didn't have time to figure that out. Uh, so you can see the electric motor in the rear. It's like a, um, I guess a solid, it's kind of a live axle suspension style, kind of like the Mustang. Uh, jerry cans. Man, I use DeWalt tools, but um, I would love to make these like uh, battery things instead, but yellow just kind of clashes with this. I might have to switch to Milwaukee. Um, so yeah, you can see part of the original tub here. Um, Here's a better look at the dash and stuff from this side. Put some more of the carpeting there just to kind of cover up the horrible uh, aluminum paneling. A um, little bit of a gap where the body kind of, uh, I could have moved the body a little bit forward, but then it started to look odd. This is kind of in the middle position. Uh, I reversed the cross member here and you can see the seat actually, he's a little janky here. The seat connects with two bolts. The seat connects to the frame of the UTV at the bottom by the battery, and uh, there's a, the rear crossbar that's underneath here. Um, you can kind of see it. Um, it connects to that, so that's why it's kind of three points. And um, 
yeah, so that's a quick little tour. So the cost of everything. So the Mototech UTV was $1,400. Uh, it took forever to show up and um, came via cheap freight company. The Power Wheels Warthog came from Walmart. That was $500. Uh, the quality on that was really good, actually. Um, my wife had fun. She's a little bit shorter than me, so she could actually drive it. I was too tall for it. Um, and uh, if you have any kids, I highly recommend it. It's so some later revisions for this. Uh, like I said, uh, this was kind of a rush job, although I think it came out pretty good with the exception of probably uh, the carpeting to cover up some of the chopped up warthog bits. Um, I think some maybe aluminum paneling inside and kind of color match that maybe with some green paint. Uh, I would like to color match the suspension bits. Uh, the green paint is not a direct match um, to the body, obviously. Uh, the white springs are not a cannon, they should be red. Um, the other thing is uh, some 3D printed hubcaps. I found, one, uh, one of my buddies found uh, an RC, a guy that made RC caps, because there's a, just like a red cat uh, crawler uh, thing conversion you can actually buy and 3D print. So that is kind of a revision later. Like I said, I'm um, like a literally, uh, I literally finished this yesterday uh, after working about 24 hours straight on it pretty much the only free weekend I had, July 4th weekend. And, um, and next week I'm loading up for Road America. So this, you'll start seeing, hopefully, a lot of photos and stuff of me driving around the paddock and stuff at Grid Life. Uh, this project's been a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the little skit at the beginning. And uh, thanks for watching.